Guys, we've got some weapon tuning inside today, directly from Bungie. This is for Season 23. Hi, all. It's the weapon teams here with a look at the Season 23 weapon changes. While we do have a few PvP changes in here for you to see, we wanted to share a deeper look at the PvE changes specifically. When we look at weapon balance in PvE, we look at several things and ask ourselves some questions. This is not an exhaustive list, just some of the common ones. What is the intended role for the weapon? What ammo time does the weapon use? How safe is it to use the weapon? How easy Easy as the weapon to use and how much damage per second does it do compared to other options when we take all the answers to the above questions we can holistically see if a weapon is potentially over or underperforming in the sandbox within these bounds then we have a solid baseline to compare to so one of the very first things we need to do is look at which weapons answer the above questions in a satisfactory manner let's take auto rifles for example their intended role is mostly focused on ad clear as opposed to major killers burst dps or extended DPS. They all use primary ammo for now. They are also moderately safe to use as close to mid-range options allow you to be relatively further away from combatants. Although for the most part, they're not as safe as scout rifles, hand cannons, or pulse rifles. And they're generally safer than sidearms and submachine guns. They are also relatively easy to use with less punishment for missing individual shots and a lower resilience on critical hits than pulse rifles, scout rifles, bows, and hand cannons while being a bit more reliant than SMGs. They currently deal about 25% less DPS to minor combatants than SMGs do. Since they are safer to use than an SMG, given their it makes sense for them to deal less damage. However, given that they are more reliant on headshots, this price seems a bit high in the current sandbox. Now, given these values, we can make an educated decision on how to balance auto rifles. This, of course, is only the first step in the balance process. After we make a change, we will play test it extensively with the A-B comparisons to get a better idea how it feels in game and to make sure we have not miss the mark with our change. Sometimes we realize after playtesting that a change is not enough and we'll take a second pass in a future release to move the weapon closer to the ideal target. This process in part helped to lead to our decision in season 23 to increase their damage versus minor combatants by 10%. And this should narrow the gap in effectiveness between SMGs and auto rifles without overstepping their bounds and invalidating another class of weapon. We hope this provides useful insight into how we look at balancing weapons for BVE and that it will help you to better understand Understand many of the changes that we'll be discussing below. All right. Okay, first up, auto rifles, buff, 10%. I like it. Necrochasm, Tommy's matchbook. Hell, we just talked about horror story. Can we just take a moment to point out the fact that Bungie said auto rifles use primary ammo for now? Hint, hint, incoming auto rifles that take special ammo? Surely not heavy ammo, right? That just sounds too wild. Now, weapon archetypes. General, we discovered a couple weapons with mistimed ammunition loading animations. So we updated Drake and Zalo's Bane to load ammo at the correct point in the animation. Auto rifles. Auto rifle DPS is generally in a pretty good place, but they were lagging slightly behind when it came to damage against minor combatants. So we increased damage against minors, those being red bar combatants, by 10%. Now pulse rifles. Ah! Pulse rifle DPS and PvE is comparable to scout rifle damage. But in the new sandbox, they are more closely aligned with hand cannons and auto rifles in terms of range. As such, we have increased their damage against minor and major combatants to move them closer to the other mid-range options and will continue to monitor them to see how this changes their effectiveness. Increased damage against minors and major combatants by 12.5%. Oh, guys, I am convinced we are getting an aggressive pulse rifle next season, perhaps as an exotic. Considering that we just got a huge range change for pulse rifles, aggressors though have a lot more range, but 12.5% more damage. Dude, there are so many exotic pulse rifles that are going to be popping off with this change. Outbreak Perfected, Collective Obligation, Graviton Lance, Revision Zero, Revision Zero in its sniper rifle form. Now, Glaives. We wanted to improve how good it feels to use Glaives as both a melee and projectile weapon. We also wanted to increase the uptime of the shield without pushing it too far into the realm of being overpowered. As such, we have made changes to all three aspects of Glaives. It's projectiles. Glaive projectiles were generally just slow enough that they felt unreliable to use against fast moving targets. An impulse amplifier was seen as a must have perk for glaive usage in pvp meanwhile in pve the glaive projectiles felt underpowered compared to other special ammo options like fusion rifles and shotguns so we gave glaives a healthy portion of the impulse amplifier buff at base and increased their damage in pve by a substantial amount to make them feel more worthy of their limited ammo in pvp the increased projectile speed has greatly improved their ease of use so we brought the damage dealt by the projectile down just a bit to keep 
glaives in line. So Bungie increased projectile speed by 30%. They also increased projectile damage in PvE by 25%, but they decreased projectile damage in PvP. Aggressives now do 125 damage, adaptives 113, and rapid fires 101. Now the melee. The long delay between firing the projectile and being able to melee made glaives feel clunky and unintuitive to use. So we reduced that delay to a more manageable amount. This delay exists so that people cannot dive on the other players and fire the melee as a single event. But three fourths of a second was definitely more conservative than what was needed to prevent that behavior. It should now feel far more intuitive to shoot a projectile and follow up with a melee attack without it feeling overly frustrating to fight someone using that combination. So they reduced the delay after firing before you can melee from 0.75 seconds to 0.2 seconds. Good God, dude, that's fast. Granted, you got to close the gap. You're probably going to get killed before you do, but a combination that should be much more manageable. Now shields. Relying on dealing damage with a projectile to grant shield energy was a choice made to limit the amount of uptime the highly damage resistant shields had in Crucible and in in-game PvE content. Unfortunately, it effectively gated a significant portion of the weapon's effectiveness and made using a glaive without energy feel like you were wielding half a weapon. We wanted to increase the uptime of the shield so that you could get a little bit more of the weapon's fantasy to shine through. But we had to be careful not to give too much or to allow the shield to become too strong in competitive content. So they made the shield energy now recharge passively when the glaive is held at a rate of 1% per second. Oh, so Bungie's essentially taking like the route of swords here, separating ammo from the energy of the weapon itself. Now they also set up base glaive shield damage resistance to be tiered in PvP. Base glaive shield damage resistance remains at 50%. Damage resistance against primary ammo weapons and melee attacks has been reduced to 30%. Definitely a change in preparation for checkmate, right? Next we have sniper rifles. We're continuing our trend of moving sniper rifles up by small amounts at a time to make sure we do not upset the encounter balance of PvE. But Bungie is increasing sniper rifle PvE damage with a flat buff of 15%. This also applies to exotic sniper rifles that use heavy ammo. Oh! Guys, I don't know if you know this or not, but Whisper of the Worm is literally almost there. Almost there at being the best DPS in the game. It already is the best total damage in the game, but this 15% buff is gonna be very nice. But even other sniper rifles like Cloud Strike, Succession, Darcy, well, maybe not Darcy, but the rest of these are looking very good, especially Whisper. Now, exotic weapons. Vex Mythic Class. Although Vex Mythic Class received both a range buff and a PV damage buff in Season of the Witch, we believe believe it has additional room to grow in PvE and find a unique role. We've increased damage against minor combatants and boss combatants and are going to be experimenting with a different style of anti-champion gameplay. Instead of having an intrinsic anti-champion perk, we are massively increasing the damage that the linear fusion rifle mode deals to all champions. Now this places it in a unique space of being more of a Swiss army knife and less of a specialist. We envision it as a weapon you could take into an activity regardless regardless of which champion type is present and still have it be an effective tool, especially when it's utilized in concert with other anti-champion abilities. So we're increasing the damage versus minor combatants by 10%, bosses by 25%, and champions by 200%? What? Good God. That's a lot of damage, fellas. I don't think I'm going to be using anything but Vex Mythic class next season. Now, of course, this is in the linear infusion rifle form. Notice they said minor combatants is still a 10% buff and against bosses is a 25% buff. So keep in mind, that's for just base Vex Mythic class. But against champions, 200% more damage. We're gonna have to run the numbers on that, but that's like better than Arbalus. That's better than Lawrence Driver. And what's so beautiful about Vex Mythic class is all the different ways you can build into it. Amping it up with things like Radiant and certain builds. I love it with Path of Burning Steps. This is gonna be beautiful. Now, Revision Zero. Oh my, we already know it's getting the Pulse Rifle buff. As a second part of our anti-champion experiment, we are also increasing Revision zero's damage versus champions, although by a much lower amount, since the weapon also retains its intrinsic anti-barrier. We're increasing damage versus champions by 100%. Oh, 
Dude, that is still fantastic, guys. Keep in mind, it's the sniper rifle shot. Like, don't get me wrong, the pulse rifle damage, that's nice. It's definitely by no means a good ad clear weapon. But that sniper rifle shot, that 100% more damage, the 12.5% on top of it, and it's a kinetic. Fellas, you better be doing Seraph Shield. Now, Thorn. In season 23, Thorn will be getting both a catalyst to bring its strength up in PvP and a change to the base behavior to make it more fun to use in PvE. Picking up a remnant will overflow the magazine next season up to 40 rounds max what the catalyst will also give you plus 20 range plus 10 stability and getting kills or picking up a remnant will grant additional range handling and mobility guys i cannot stress enough how good Thorn is about to be, especially in PvP. And maybe even in PvE, dude. 40 rounds max. Do break out Necronic Grips. Now, Class Glaives. Oh my, they need some help. Alongside the Glaive rework mentioned above, we have also done some tuning on the Class Exotic Glaives introduced in the Witch Queen. The below changes are for all three Glaives to make using their exotic functionality both more forgiving and more understandable. They will now grant one ammo when you activate the perk so that you can use it even if you're out of ammo. Oh wow, the main thing is to get full damage, right? You no longer passively drain shield energy when you special reload to activate the perk, and you no longer deactivate by reloading or stowing the weapon. Now, for the exotic glaives and their individual buffs themselves, Edge of Intent, this is the Warlock Glaive. Edge of Intent seemed like it was begging for some solo 3.0 interaction instead of the previous generic killing effect, and a larger area of effect helps it reach more nearby allies too. So they changed the effect of the healing turret projectiles to grant cures and provide restoration. They also increased the AOE radius to 8 meters to benefit more nearby allies. They even increased the magazine size from 4 to 5. Alright? I still think the radius should be bigger, but okay. We can work with that. Now, Edge of Action. This is the Titan Glaive. We wanted to make the Baby Bubble more effective in in-game content, so it now provides some benefits to weapons just for passing through it, even if you do not remain inside. So, passing through the bubble now grants bonus reload speed, handling, and a small amount of stacking bonus damage in addition to the overship. They also reduce the health of the bubble from 8,000 to 2,400 to account for the increased uptime and improved effects. Now that's interesting. Stacking bonus damage. And they're not saying weapons of light, so I'm not sure exactly how much of a bonus we're talking about, but the main takeaway here is that it will stack beyond just our surges. Now, Edge of Concurrence. Hunter. The glaive changes mentioned above already made this quite solid, but we felt that Lightning Seeker presented a fun opportunity opportunity for an arc 3.0 interaction. So Lightning Seeker now jolts targets on impact. Uh, and they reduce the direct hit damage of Lightning Seeker to account for the free ammo granted. Okay, so they're toning the damage down there, but the jolt, that's nice. And again, with that jolt opens up a ton of synergy elsewhere in arc 3.0. Now Osteostriga, oh boy, I'm smelling a nerf. Osteostriga has been, quite frankly, far too powerful for the ease of use it provides when it comes to ad clearing PvE. It has more range than most of the SMGs, it does not require kills, and it does not rely heavily on precision aim to activate one of the strongest AoEs we have ever had in Destiny. In addition, the lingering poisoning damage has benefited from the damage scaler that SMGs get in PvE content, which was intended to buff SMGs direct impact damage. This scaler, which is one of the highest scalers of any weapon type in the game, is pushing the poison damage to such an extreme level that it's been difficult for any other weapon to compete in the ad clear role. While while it is likely that this change will not move the needle in Osteostriga by a substantial amount, it will at least be slightly less of an outlier compared to other ad clear weapons. To preempt the argument, buffing other weapons up to the same level would be power creep to an extreme degree and very unhealthy for the game as a whole. So it is not something we are going to explore. Wow, Bungie is going ahead and just nipping that in the bud, right? So Bungie is removing the SMG damage scaler or damage bonus scaler that was affecting the poison damage. This brings Osteostriga poison down to match standard necrotic grips poison, though as an exotic, it will still deal that 40% bonus damage against miners. Guys, I had a feeling this was coming. Literally, the argument came up here recently where everyone was like, Cross, why would I use Necrochasm when I've got Ostia? Why would I use this weapon when I got Ostia? And that's when you know the nerf is coming. Now, let me just be clear. That's not to say you're not gonna have its exotic perk and its synergy with necrotic grips still be very good. I think this is still gonna be good. I need to go run the numbers again to see what that match is off a of necrotic, which I don't believe was ever really that high. So we're gonna have to take a look at it. But this 1000% just paves the way for Thorn next season. Everybody that was using Osteostriga, fret not, Thorn is getting a hell of a buff. Now, Salvation's Grip. Monday 
placed a speed limit on the detonation when damaging stasis crystals. This will help prevent the detonation from being able to shatter too many crystals on a single frame, which would sometimes kick the player to orbit with an error code. Really, Bungie? Dude, I was getting excited. I thought Salvation's grip was getting another buff. And by the way, it did get a buff. We re-reviewed it in our deep dive. It's all right. It's still in a niche spot. I'm still holding out for the stasis changes, right? Like, that's going to be the thing that's going to put Salvation's grip and other stasis weapons on the map. Speaking of stasis weapons, Winterbite. We did not want to leave Winterbite out of the Glaive Improvement Pass. So we've made it a little stronger and a little bit less lethal to the user. Oh, thank God. Dude, I kill myself with Winterbite all the time. Bungie increased the detonation damage of the large projectile by 25%. But the self-damage blast radius has been halved. The self-damage has been reduced. Wow, we are a far cry from when it was meta back in Lifehall for like a week. Now perks, Danger Zone. We made a small change to how Danger Zone works on rocket launchers. You can figure it out for yourself when Season 23 drops. Bungie, what does that even mean? Is that a good thing? Heavy Grip. We discovered that the Heavy Grip perk was slightly increasing incoming flinch. That was not intended, so we removed it. Precision Instrument. The difference between Precision Instrument and Enhanced Precision Instrument was barely noticeable. You ain't lying there. So we wanted to differentiate the two a bit. So we increased Enhanced Precision Instrument damage bonus at max stacks from 26% to 30%. All right, now Kinetic Tremors. We wanted to make the activation requirement more consistent across archetypes. So we changed the number of hits needed to trigger it on some weapons. So Pulse Rhymes, common reduce from 12 to 11. Enhance increased from nine to 10. Really? Surprised they went up with Enhance. Non-burst sidearms, common, reduced from 12 to eight. Wow, that is a big change, guys. Break out those buzzards. Enhance, reduced from nine to seven. Now nothing here on SMGs, but that's actually really good for buzzer. And the DPS on buzzer was already pretty solid with kinetic tremors. But of course, the ammo economy, the mag size, the 12 shots required, it just didn't feel good. That is a big buff though. Now for the future. In the season 23 mid-season patch and the patch that will launch with the final shape, we will have a host of new changes for you to try. Some highlights to look forward to are near future bow tuning in PVP. Ah, there we go. To my fellow bow users, enjoy it while you can. An additional weapon tuning for checkmates aimed at promoting a better diversity of weapons. Now for the far future, Necrochasm will be getting a buff to extend the duration of the poison damage over time effect it applies from the curse throw explosion. Looky there, man. Bungie's literally slapping Ostia Striga down and lifting Necrochasm up. It will also have a new catalyst called one for Thrall, which grants a moderate period of increased damage, range, and aim assist after you damage three enemies in quick succession. Damaging three or more enemies while the perk is active refreshes the timer. Oh, that is beautiful. Y'all better jump in and do some Crota's in. Now, they're also going to be buffing Truth, Colony, and Dead Man's Tail, as well as other exotic weapons. My god, I almost forgot about Colony. Outside of bugging immunity shields, I don't think I've used that weapon legitimately since D2 Vanilla. And number three, Heavy grenade launchers will get a substantial inventory buff. Oh, a cosmic? You shall be meta? All right, guys, that is your dev insights for season 23 and beyond. No lie, these look juicy, man. I'm excited. I love the emphasis on our weapons. And don't get me wrong, I love using builds, but you definitely want a good, healthy balance. And this seems to be pushing us in that direction, right? I think out of everything here, though, the Vex Mythic Class change doing 200% more damage next season, that one, that one right there excites me the most. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.